Hi, welcome to Broadway Speaks Out. I'm your host, Marty Gold Cummings, and we are sitting with downtown nightlife extraordinaire Raven O. Hello. Hi, Marty. So we are at the Bleecker Street Theater. Yeah, in the office. In the office. <laughs> it's very, very high end here. So, <laughs> so you're doing a, a show at this theater. Yeah, I'm doing my first off-Broadway show, show uh, opening May 18th, and it's going to run every Tuesday for the summer. Every Tuesday. So how, tell us a little bit about the show and how it came to, to be... How it happened? Yeah. Well, I mean, I was I've been looking for a theater to do it in, but I wanted to, wanted it to be in like a kind of downtown, edgy, mm -hmm. you know, East Village. I spent most of my life, my thirty years in New York, in the East Village, and then I did a benefit here for the Howl Festival, and I fell in love with the theater, and so it was a perfect fit. Yeah. And you're also doing a show on Thursdays, is that correct? At the box? I do. I perform at the box once in a while. Yeah, on Thursdays. Okay. Yeah. No, it's not. It's like on and off. Yeah. On and off. Yeah. Yeah. No, you said you've been in New York for 30 years? About, th I, yeah, I was, I said, maybe even more than 30 years. I can't really remember. If I, if I, if, I, if you give me a minute, I can count. 89, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, well, I've been performing since I was a kid, you know, I mean, I was singing and dancing since I was a child and started professionally like when I was like, 13, 14 and just been working ever since, you know, and um, it's just what I've always done. That's the only thing I've ever done was sing and dance and do act. That's everything. I've never, every other job I've ever had, I've always gotten fired or I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. So, you know, 36 years in New York, what's been the most memorable performance or show that you've worked on on um, this show this one yeah because it's my first you know one man off broadway you know i've worked on a lot i've done a lot of work and but this show is really special because it's like autobiographical and you know i'm telling stories of my life how i got here and how i became who i am and you know with music and stories and you know it was, it was something i've been wanting to do a long time and now we're doing it you know. who's influenced your career Oh, everybody. Is, I get influenced by everyone, like um, other artists, you know, people on the street. You know, I see a movie, you know, there's no, there's no one person that I used to think, oh, yeah, this person. But then I look at everything now and I see that everything influences me. you probably, that outfit probably is going to influence me. You know, everything influences me as an artist. I just kind of take it all in. As far as, as, as you know, aesthetics and style, I think um, probably person that's really been influential for me as far as an image has been and the way they look is people like you know David Bowie and, yeah. and Grace Jones and as far as designers probably Terry Mugler mm -hmm. and um, and Halston people who have really cool strong looks and you know yeah I have a certain aesthetic that I kind of I'm drawn to so people kind of stand out as, as individuals and unique and, and, and androgynous and kind of people who kind of push the envelope I'm not androgynous. yeah yeah androgynous. I've always been very, in, you know, androgynous, and um, I've always tried to push, push buttons and push the envelope. Like, you know, I always try to and try to mix things. It's musically, my mo my biggest influence is my parents. Be oh, really? Okay. Because the, the the music they love influenced me. So, although my father in the beginning I hated all his music because I had that hate my dad kind of yeah. relationship. Of course, when I was a kid, I mean that's not true. But eventually down the line, I ended up you know singing the music that he loves. You know. In the beginning, I would be all about what my mom liked because I was mama's boy. But as an artist, I kind of um, I'm more drawn to what my dad liked, which is um, jazz and big band and country and those kind of and you know th that kind of music. So I kind of it's funny, you know, when I was my younger years, I was closer to my mother as far as her taste in music, and now that I'm older, I'm I'm I you know I consider myself a dra jazz singer more than anything else. So. I like that. I like that you've grown into... To well, I love both my that. parents, you know? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but you, you've, like, you know, grown into yeah. that, that other style of music that... Yeah, I mean, I, I always say, because my mom was into rock and roll and funk and stuff, because <laughs> she was, like, you know, 13 years younger than my father. So I my, my favorite music is rock mm -hmm. and jazz. So it's, like, these two, you know... They kind of influence each other a little bit, right? Well, they're both... Both styles of music is... Um, it's not the... It's not the middle, you know, because mm -hmm. rock and roll and jazz are two really extreme styles. You know, it's like, you know, it's kind of like jazz is as extreme as punk and rock. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. most people, are, you know, are into pop or you know something that's a little bit, 
tamer and I like things that are extreme. So. Very good. So what is your advice, if you have a piece of advice for a young artist who's who's trying to break out into this, this kind of um, androgynous underground uh, performance world? To, well, just be disciplined, you know, and just kind of like, um, you know, it's, it's hard for young people right now because there's not a lot of support for arts. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was in the club scene, in the underground scene, there was a lot of venues that really supported art and supported performance. Now, it's, you know, it's not so much. It's very difficult. You have to really, really make your own mark and, uh, you know, and just, you know, just be disciplined and work hard and, you know, rehearse and, and take, take, listen to people. You know, my mother was an actress, when, you know, she, when she was younger. And when I got into acting, my first play actually I ever did, a professional play, was with my mother. And, and she gave me one piece of advice the, 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 the night I got the part. In the car, she turned to me and said, I'm going to give you one piece of advice. And it's the only advice she ever gave me as an artist. She said, this is the only thing you should know, that this will help you a lot. She said, shut your mouth and listen. And just soak in everything and listen to what people say. And don't, and just remember that, you know, you're learning things, you know, just, that's basically it. And a lot of you, when you're young, because I know, when I was very young, I knew everything. But I didn't know anything, yeah. of course. You know, oh, no, I know, I know. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that is the one thing all young people will say. You know, if you did, yeah, I know. You know, and you I don't, know you, and you don't do that. You know, you don't know. It's like, so I, I like not knowing, you know, because I've learned that. The more I don't know, the more I get to learn, and the better I get. And that's a secret weapon that you know that people don't understand. That uh, a lot of people don't understand it. If you give up that your ability to learn, you're not going to get better. You're just going to be the same thing, and everybody's going to stale, stale, and you're not going to grow, and everybody's going to get tired of you. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's doing that. Oh, she's still doing. But if you're willing to learn and grow. You're gonna surprise everybody constantly. You're like, wow, shit, man, you're doing that now? You know, because I've done. Can I swear on this? <laughs> oh, that's fine. Okay, because because uh, I've done like, you know, I started in one place, and I, you know, what I was what I was doing ten years ago, I'm doing something totally different now. You know, and it's just I keep moving and keep growing. You know, so reinventing and, and yeah, you know, it's uh, just evolving. it's just it's it's just a natural you know ev you know it's evolution in art. You know, you have to if you look at the works of Picasso and you know, and great painters and great, and great, great musicians, they grew and they changed. The ones that became irrelevant stayed the same. Well, um, lastly, just because I, I have to mention it, you were in the telephone video, oh, Sherry oh, Vine. Yeah. I, I just have to call it out. Make me moan, make me moan. I yeah. love it. Yeah, the Gaga parody, her <laughs> new Gaga parody, yeah. And Joey Arias is in that, and you're very good friends with Joey. Joey and I, that's like, Joey's my best friend. Yeah, I've yeah. known Joey like, like a million years. You, you guys, you did the Cirque du Soleil after him, correct? We did Cirque du Soleil together oh, at the together. same time. Okay. I was there for three years and then I left and he stayed for another two. And we did the, uh, we, he was the MC and I was the MC. We switched off. Oh, okay. It was the first time the Cirque had two different MCs in one show. Yeah. Yeah, but we weren't on stage together at the yeah. same time, so, you know. So it was, it was a great, great experience. You know, Joey's like a, but that video was a lot of fun. I haven't done like <laughs> drag. Like get like in drag with a bra, or whatever, or in a dress in like years, because I don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, Sherry asked me, "Would you do this for me?" And I was like, well, "Yeah, for you, I'll do anything." Because I was playing a real a dyke. You can't uh, say no to Sherry. No, that's yeah. why Sherry's like you know one of my closest friends as well. You know, <laughs> the th you know Sherry's one of my best friends. When I have like maybe like ten best friends, and Sherry's one of them. And I was, you know, anything for Sherry. And so I was like, yeah, I'll fucking put on the bra. And, well, your abs look fantastic. I was like, <laughs> and I was like, she's not a woman. And I was like, <laughs> you know, I was like, okay, I'll be the dyke. And I was like, Ooh. it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was I had hysterical. Go. It was a lot of, and it's gotten so many hits. I know. I keep, I'm, y'all, the, the, the androgyny and drag has taken over YouTube. Um, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, good, I good, love good. it. Well, yeah. thank you so much. And I thank certainly you, learned a, a lot in this interview on, Thank on you. how to better Come myself. Come to my show, May, can I say, May 18th, Tuesday, May 18th, we open, and every Tuesday for the summer at the Bleecker Street Theater, 45 Bleecker Street. 45 Bleecker Street, Bleecker Street Theater, every Tuesday in the summer starting May 18th. So yeah. check out Raven O. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mary.